So when you're feeling vulnerable with someone and because of your wound and something you're hurt by, you choose to, I'm going to say, lash out with a weapon and not just trust somebody because you have them under a microscope. Well, they're not going to do me wrong because I'm watching. They're not supposed to do you wrong when you're not watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about a YouTube video review on Lisa's channel which is called Women of Impact. I will link it down below. Her YouTube channel, there is no way to explain her YouTube channel. She brings all types of people on her channel and it's majority women, but this time she brought on a different guest. His name is Matthew Hussey. He is a relationship expert. He also has his own YouTube channel. He is a life coach and an author he wrote a book and might i say this is a good one so let's get into it so the first question she asks is what type of red flags should we be looking for when we're dating there's all types of red flags and he gives two different sides to it there could be red flags as in someone having toxic behavior um, so traits that would fit under that umbrella of toxic behavior. And then there's also situations where a red flag would arise where you guys just aren't matching up on the same page. And he says that one thing that falls underneath both umbrellas would be like when you go on a date and it's the first time you're meeting this person and all of a sudden by the end of the date, they're totally invested. They're telling you, oh my gosh, I've never met anyone like you. And they're portraying this image of you for either A, something they're projecting onto you about themselves, or B, they just like feeling that way. They like being in that state of emotion. He said that would be a red flag situation. And again, I will link this video below. So yeah, I thought that was interesting because it was a perspective I haven't heard. You know, that was a really good answer. And what I also like, which he gets into later, is that he doesn't like labeling, and I could be jumping the gun on this, He, but he doesn't like labeling people as toxic people. It's more like, people have toxic like behavior or toxic behavior. So I really like that and I want to try to incorporate that in my life. Okay, second question. Do we throw the word toxic out there a little bit too loosely? And do we use that word as an excuse to dismiss someone? Kind of just put the blame on that. Oh, they're toxic. You know, that sort of thing. And I thought that was a good question. Uh, I just, <laughs> side note, I just love her facial expressions when she interviews people. She just seems so like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like she seems so in tune with it. I love it. Okay, if you haven't found out, if you're new, yes, I am a dork. And yes, I love watching stuff like this. Hence why my YouTube channel is all about it. So this is where he goes into explaining that he doesn't like to label people, as I said before, like two seconds ago. He doesn't like to label people with saying that person is toxic because we've all had, you know, bad energy at some point, negative energy, and it wouldn't be fair to label people as toxic when they were just on their off day, you know? Kind of when people like judge people too fast, that sort of thing. That's what happened. So yeah, I love that. And then he goes into what's called wounds versus, or not versus, but wounds and weapons. I love this part. This is so true. This is a good part. 
Okay, if you don't take away anything from this video, just hold on to this part. Learn something from this part. So when you're feeling vulnerable with someone and because of your wound and something you're hurt by, you choose to, I'm going to say, lash out with a weapon. And he goes on to talk about, you know, we're people, so we are not perfect. And that when we're hurt, we choose a weapon to disguise our wounds. I was like, oh, okay. And so one of them, like your weapon could be the silent treatment. I do that sometimes, okay? That's one of my flaws, right? Because you're so hurt, you don't know what's going on, you're maybe in shock because somebody did something and you were vulnerable with that person. Like, it takes a lot, okay? It takes a lot to be vulnerable. Like, genuinely vulnerable with someone. Or another example would be you can have that trait of being passive aggressive. That could be your wound. You know, there's different methods he goes into. And I thought that was a very good point. So next time you're in an argument or next time you're in a debate or you're frustrated with someone or angry with someone, look to see if you're lashing out with, because a lot of people could have Two different types of wounds so check to see if you're lashing out with any of these wounds you never know might be surprised because the more self-aware you are about yourself that's just a leg up to help yourself out and why wouldn't you want to improve on yourself that's the thing i don't get why wouldn't you want to be better for yourself I mean, I guess if you're scared, that could be one reason you don't want to improve on yourself, right? Like if someone's scared to let go of pain, because if that's all you're used to feeling, I can see you being scared and not wanting to feel happy. It's not a good thing, but it's a thing. And the point he's trying to make with the weapons and wounds thing is that we spend too much time bringing out our weapons and not our wounds and being open. Well, okay, hey, I'm hurt because X, Y, and Z. And people are so scared to be vulnerable, you know? It does, it takes a lot. And I like what he says. He says wounds equal strength and weapons equal destruction. Like they destroy relationships. It's not the wounds that get in the way, it's the weapons because we're so used to being on the defense of maybe taking something personal or, you know, if, you know, I guess it just depends on the situation, but we're so used to bringing out our weapons versus our wounds. So I thought that was interesting. So he then points out, like going back to the red flags situation, that if in a relationship, one person is putting more effort into the relationship and into the unit as a whole, that that's not going to work out. That is not obviously not healthy. And that if you bring up to the other person that you're dating, or in a relationship with hey I've noticed that maybe I'm trying a little bit harder in XYZ category or I'm putting more effort into this and showing up when you need me a little bit more than you are for me and he says you can bring it up to your partner in a classy way like you don't have to be all rude and snooty I guess <laughs> about it which I agree you know if you go to your partner respectfully and say, hey, I think I'm a little, I'm a little worried about maybe I'm doing this a little bit more or, you know, I guess it could be a bunch of different examples. So let me stop trying to give examples. 
I'm going to keep saying X, Y, and Z. You plug it in. This whole interview she's doing with Matthew is basically how to see if somebody is toxic or, you know, red flags that pertain to being toxic. And so he kind of bounces back and forth. So take some notes. It'll look better on paper. So yeah, if you bring it up to your partner and you try, you're trying to tell them, hey, I might be doing more in this category or more in that category or all the categories, it just depends. And if your partner notices the gap, then it's a good thing and they try to work on it. That's the second half because it's no point on noticing the gap and then not working on it. Like, what does that do? It doesn't do anything. So if they notice the gap and start to work on it, it's great. If they don't notice that gap, then that's a red flag. A little bit of toxic behavior. This is my next this is my favorite part. This is my absolute favorite part. Okay, like I like the first part that I just said, but this, this follows through with it. So he jumps from this gap and noticing the gap to this statement, your feelings are valid. And I like the way he puts this. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to explain it all the way, but if you go check out the video, then you'll see what I'm talking about. So he goes into this thing on, you need to pay attention to your feelings because when you start to pay attention, you'll notice you start assuming things too fast. Okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, so sometimes our partner will do something and we automatically assume. So let's say your partner is on the way home, right? You're, you're dating someone or they're on the way to come see you if they don't live to get, if y'all don't live together and say they're like, okay, I'm on my way. I'm running a little bit late. Okay. They're honestly probably just running a little bit late. Say there was a traffic accident or something had happened, right? Who knows? Anything could happen. Anyone could be late, but you, you automatically go into, oh no, he's late. He could be cheating, right? Let's just say that, right? Example. So you automatically go into a frenzy because you think that your partner is cheating and you're bringing your insecurity out because you've seen in your last relationship that when your partner was running late all the time, and they happened to have cheated on you. You know, you start to correlate the two just because this person did it and your ex maybe ran late all the time, but they ended up cheating on you. Let's say the two didn't even correspond. It just happened, okay? But in your brain, now you're insecure and you don't wanna be cheated on. So that's the red flag you look for. So now your new partner is running late and you automatically go into your insecurity and you're like, yep, that's it. That validates he cheating on me or she's cheating on me. And that could not be the case. The new person you're with could just be running late for whatever reason. Or what if they're running late all the time, like your ex, you know, and they're just bad with time management. <laughs> like don't bring out your insecurity and start assuming. That's why he says you have to pay attention to your feelings and why you feel the way you feel. I like this Matthew guy. It makes a lot of sense. Then he reminds you that your number one job is to take care of yourself. Which is a good one. A lot of people forget to put themselves first. That can be a serious issue, people. Okay, so then she goes into Lisa. She then goes in to ask Matthew, what do you do when you go into that next relationship with that next person if your previous person hurt you really bad and like did you wrong basically? Um, because when you go into a new relationship, people are always asking, people are always scared. How can I trust the next person? And his answer is crazy. He goes into saying that 
you need to learn to self-trust. So trust within yourself that you'll be okay if that person does cheat on you or does do you wrong because there is no telling who's going to do you wrong. You can't trust that that person isn't going to do you wrong because nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. What you need to learn is trust within yourself that you'll be able to get up and walk away afterwards. Beautiful, Matthew. Beautiful. I just love it. Just doesn't that hit, right? Like, why wouldn't we do that? So he says, give somebody complete freedom and space. So much freedom and space that you're giving them almost an opportunity to like do you wrong. And if they don't, then bam, like you're good. You want to be able to trust somebody at full capacity, if that made sense, <laughs> and not just trust somebody because you have them under a microscope. Well, they're not going to do me wrong because I'm watching. They're not supposed to do you wrong when you're not watching amazing and then he says when you go into a relationship you should learn to trust that other person because that's your standard when you're in a relationship the next question she says how do you know if you are the toxic one because what if you are the toxic one and you don't know it you know not a lot of people like to admit their faults so he says you have to learn yourself and ask yourself where am i being reasonable and where am i being unreasonable and then you have to pay attention to how wrong you could be like you're not always going to be right in every situation in every circumstance because if that's how you think then you're convinced of your own story every single time and that's not going to get you anywhere and just make sure it's a team effort when you're dating someone because yes, you could have, let's do anxiety. I get, we're gonna do me as an example. I get really hormonal on my cycle and if I'm on my cycle and I'm having anxiety at the same time, it is negative energy 100%. I know that I'm being negative and I know I'm in a bad mood and I'm in that bad energy space. So that is toxic, right? So I know that it is toxic. I know that I'm not going to be in that space all the time, but I need to make sure my partner doesn't feed into that negative energy and that flame and, you know, puts more fuel to the fire. You don't want that. You want somebody to calm you down in those situations where you have weaknesses. That person has strengths that helps out. So it's basically seeing if that other person and your partner brings out the worst in you or the best in you. So then he ends it with core confidence. And core confidence is invincible. If you are confident within yourself, then you'll be able to get through anything. You know, it's all about you learning how to be strong and be confident within yourself and your emotions and your feelings and what you deserve and nothing else will matter. How amazing is that? I just love this. Okay, but that is it. So what do you think? Do you think you could relate to this? I could, this is relatable, right? Again, this will go in the people section, people review. So if you want more of her channel, or of Matthew, let me know, comment below and I can do that. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys. <sighs> we are gonna get started. I got my fruit water because it's day six of no coffee, no alcohol. Cheers on women. Oh, what's her name? Lisa? Yeah. How do you take me seriously with cat hairs on? I don't know. Who knows? But I love them. You know, she just gets right into it, which I love. <laughs> I need to work on that. Figure out how that works. Warming them up. 
woman a minima. Warming her right up. I am breaking out all over the place. I got one over here, one right here, one up underneath my jawline, and one in the mustache area. It's not cute. Not cute. Oh, and some of them are up underneath the skin. Oh. As I said before, concealer is my favorite part. Makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's happening with my voice, but it's definitely cracky. Don't know. Anyways, then he goes in. So he goes into, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, what, what's the next step in my routine? I don't know how Bailey Sarian does this, man. She's just a daggum wizard. Let's do brows. Oof, I cannot talk and do brows at the same time. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Dude, this voice thing has to go away. I don't understand what's happening. Mm -mm, that's not it. Worried about wor worry. What did I? Was that even English? <sighs> I think I'm gonna need a cough drop, right? Like you hear it? I don't understand what's happening. Isn't that a Britney Spears song? Why am I singing Britney Spears? But if you go check out the video, you little little. Since when did video have an L in it? <laughs> Think I overlined them just a little bit. Just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just going to have a overlined lip today. <laughs> I don't even know if they make these anymore. Oh, I'm cute. Who is she? Okay, my grays are always living their best life. I just don't understand. <laughs> 